Mad Sports Radio. What is that which gives me joy? Baseball. <laughs> Crying? There's no crying in baseball! This is the Bronx is Burning podcast with Mike Torres, Mark Malusis, and Mike Demurgis. Mike Demurgis, along with the great Mike Torres and Mark Malusis, with the second episode of the Bronx is Burning podcast. And let's start things off, guys, with The Martian has landed with a thud. Well, I will say this. I mean, I know that uh, he was, uh, he's been struggling when he come up here, but you know, like I said, major league pitching, once they catch a, a area where a hitter has a weakness, they're going to stay with them. And uh, I think he's one for seven in the last couple games and he has a couple strikeouts, but uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, the kid has to get out there and play if they're going to try to, you know, get him to be an everyday player for them. Uh, Mark, I thought that Cashman was talking out of both sides of his mouth by not bringing him up right away, but I, I guess he knew something about him. Who's actually at the moment of this taping was one for 11 since coming up, Mark. Yeah. I mean, number one, I, I never, I never thought Dominguez was going to resolve all the Yankees issues at the time. Um, and, you know, you're looking at, you know, the Yankees have got, you know, first, you know, kind of first world, MLB problems when you look at it. Uh, but still, I mean, the uproar to it, I think, didn't really uh, re- match uh, the level of need. Um, not saying I was a Verdugo believer, I'm not. Uh, but everything the Yankees told you is that, you know, that he needs to play every day. I mean, Mike just told you basically the same thing. Like, he's got to get reps. He's got to play every day. There's some guys that you can put on the bench, um, obviously more veteran-type players, and – they can get called in uh, in a bit role or a part-time role, and they can be successful. That's not what you want Jason Dominguez to be for this organization um, in the micro level this year or the macro level for the rest of his career. So that's where you know it is. I, I don't. I think there's an adjustment period, uh, as Mike just mentioned, going from Triple A to Major Leagues. Everyone got caught up in the fact that got to remember, like he played eight games last year. Not 30, not 48 before he suffered that UCL injury. Uh, that's not a significant period of time when you're looking at a guy having an impact. The Yankees were so bad last year. And what I mean by bad, they went 82 and 80. That was refreshing to see him. And it gave you hope for the future. With all that being said, um, he's going to get reps. He's going to get at bats. He's going to get playing time. But, and, and I'm, I think he's ultimately going to be successful because I think he's a really talented baseball player. But there also has to be a little bit of an adjustment time. I think the outrage that we saw from Yankee fans, I don't think – I think some of it was more out of frustration with the organization um, and uh, maybe a lack of commitment for going all in at the MLB trade deadline than anything else. Uh, Aaron, you know, go ahead, Mike. Also, also, you know, the other teams in the major leagues have uh, major league scouts scouting all these AAA players to their weaknesses – and and that's what happens. And usually when they come back up, I know like Mark said, they had they had he had a great eight game uh, area when he did come up. But I think now that they realize what kind of hitter he is, they're going to go to his weakness, and that that's what's probably uh, is going to happen the the rest of the season going forward. Uh, speaking of weaknesses, uh, Aaron Judge starting to show a little kryptonite, struggling over the last fifteen games, just hitting above two hundred. Uh, is is the pressure on Mark for Judge to really come through in September, in October, and have that Reggie Jackson, Albert Pujols moment for his career? Yeah, that's where you define yourself. I mean, Mike could speak to this better than anybody. I mean, that's what in this city, uh, you know, you define yourself in the, the postseason. I think uh, the ultimate insult is, yeah, well, he was a great, re- he or she was a great regular season player. Well, the inherent knock is that when it mattered the most, they didn't come through. And as brilliant as Judge has played, and he's gotten all the accolades this year and the historical run, and you know, ever since we got to May 1st, and you're right, Mike, he's cooled off as of late. He hasn't hit in October. Um, you know, and and that's a that's a problem. We've seen guys in the past do it. Barry Bonds historically was not a great postseason hitter and postseason performer. Um, you look at Aaron Judge, 
That's why you look at guys that are so celebrated, like Posada and Jeter and Bernie Williams and Mariano Rivera and big game Andy Pettit and David Cohn and all the because they were great at certain times in big moments. And ultimately, as an athlete, that's what defines you in this city. And I think for Aaron Judge, um, I already know he's a great regular season player. Uh, if this team's going to win a World Series, he's going to have to be great in October. And is there pressure on him? For sure. <laughs> it's pressure on everybody if you get once you get into the playoffs. Yeah, Mike, uh, you could attest to it. Nineteen seventy-seven, Reggie, of course, had that great Game Six, uh, World Series MVP, which you could have won MVP because you had two complete game wins. But Reggie struggled in the in, in the divisions in the championship series against Kansas City so much so that he was benched in, in Game Five. That's correct. Correct. Yeah, and then uh, of course, you know, I came in for Guidry. Uh, we were losing four to nothing uh, in the second inning. And I came in and held Kansas City scoreless for about six and the third innings, I believe. And 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 stay on that, Mike. Uh, Nestor Cortez, of course, pitched in relief brilliantly uh, this week. Uh, Yankee starting rotations really come on over the last seven seven starts for many of their starters. Their ERA is under four. Clark Schmidt's been pitching excellent. Uh, were you surprised by Nasty Nestor's comments about going to the pen? Maybe saying maybe one of the other guys should go there. No, you know what? I mean, that happens to everybody. Uh, I don't care. You know, it, it happens, especially if you play in the big leagues and the, the teams are struggling and they're trying to find answers. And this is what they have to do. And there was a good move on the Yankees part by making him go. And because he hadn't been, he pitched good for two, two games, three, got by, but he'd been hitting them pretty good. And I thought maybe I said, you know what? He just needs to get himself mentally toughened up. And what he did when he went out to the bullpen and pitched some four scoreless innings. And, uh, you know, and that's what happens. Uh, a lot of guys get discouraged because they take them out of rotation. But I, I think it helped him to get his confidence back, which I think he needed. And I, and I think he'll be all right. Mark, uh, over the last 30 years, we haven't seen many Yankee players give sound bites except for maybe David Wells, uh, Raul Mondesi, Ruben Sierra. Uh, so a little out of, out of character for the, the button up Yankees over the last three decades for someone to come out and actually say something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I, you know, but where was the pushback? I mean, when Glaber Torres said that, you know, he didn't want to go to third base. I mean, Yankee fans were, you know, kicking and stopping. And I get that, you know, there's not that love affair. And Nestor has been a guy that has worked his rear end off to put him up in this spot. But you know, the Yankees could use, uh, you know, him in the bullpen. And the, if the, the Yankees, first and foremost, they tried to trade him at the MLB trade deadline. Uh, if they were able to get Flaherty from Detroit, Cortez probably would have been traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. So, it, you know, the Yankees as an organization look at him in a certain way. And is he going to be the guy that I'm going to lean on or be the key for this team come October uh, in the starting rotation? No. So then – you have to pivot. You have to say, okay, what role can he help us with? And if this is the role, and I get as a competitor, you know, you view yourself as a starter. You don't want to be a, a middle reliever. I, 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 I understand all that. And you have to think about the financial impact as well, you know, long term. But, you know, for him, uh, I would imagine the whole big thing is all I want to do is try and help this team win. Right. I want to I want to try and help this team do something and this organization do something that they haven't done since 2009. And if they're going to accomplish that and win a World Series, nonetheless, get through the American League, beat the Astros in a big playoff series. It's got to be everyone pushing in the same direction. A couple of final thoughts here, uh, Mike. Uh, Yankees are vying to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. In, in your estimation, is this crucial to them? to their path to the world series, getting home field advantage, Mike. Yeah, I would think that they would be because I tell you the home fans, especially in New York, you know, you get such a good backing from them and uh, you know, the noise, uh, the adrenaline going through a player's uh, mind and his body. Yeah. I think it really helps them to win the division and, and have home field advantage because the Yankee fans are great in New York. And you know what you, you, you're going to an environment in different stadiums, and especially if you go on the road, you're not going to get the same feeling. Mark, if uh, the Yankees don't get home field advantage, get knocked out in the playoffs, uh, does Cashman or, or Booney uh, 
get the ax or you think they'll be back another year? Um, I think they'd probably be back. I think the only one, as Joel Sherman mentioned a couple of weeks ago, that's probably feeling the most pressure is boom, right? Because, you know, you're looking at a guy that, what, he's got an option here for next season or whatever it might be. So Boone's got to, you know, doesn't have much wiggle room. I think Cashman uh, is secure in his place. I, I really do. I, I think he's the guy that's the the most vocal. Uh, he's almost become the, the voice of the Yankees. When you look at it from a management perspective, you hear from Hal a couple of times a year, usually around his dad's birthday, the 4th of July. Outside of that, you don't really get all that much from the Yankees managing general partner. So, I don't think Cashman's going anywhere. I I don't. He's got years left on his contract. If the Yankees fail, I I think it's unfortunate here. Um, You know, you talk about the word accountability. Uh, Now, at at some point, you know, when and there are certain stages, listen, George took it to an extreme when he was owning the team in terms of accountability and made some irrational decisions at key moments that hurt the organization long term. With all that, though, the mantra rang true. You don't win a World Series, the year is a failure. The Yankees don't have that mindset now. Um, They make a lot of money. They're worth right around $8 billion as a franchise. Um, If they fail or they come up short, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Juan Soto come November 2nd. Do I think Cashman's going to lose his job? Or there's going to be some great organizational shift from a management perspective? I don't. Could they throw Boone to the Wolves and bring in a new manager? Yeah. I think that's a possibility, but let's be honest, the impact of the manager has lessened over time in Major League Baseball due to analytics, collaboration, um, and the organizational shift of of um, uh, of the impact of the manager. Everyone kind of plays a role in terms of, of who's available, the starting lineup, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, But could Boone lose his job? I think he's the guy that's facing the most pressure of anybody. Mike, uh, of course, you get Mike. the final pitch here. Uh, well, I, I'm with Mark, but I, I still think the uh, the organization scouts are the ones that are that bring recommendations to Cashman, uh, and they they have an input as well. And so somewhere it has to, you know, if they can't uh, keep getting, if they can't not get into the playoffs and win, the, you know, the World Series, then the scouts or whoever they are are going to have to answer the big questions with the big guys up in the front office. That wraps up episode two of the Bronx is burning podcast as the Yankees continue their push to the playoffs uh, in September and into October for Mike Torres and Mark Malusis. I'm Mike Demergis.